Hello guys. Welcome to Brain Blitz Audios. Today we're looking at the 10th chapter in the science syllabus of your CBSE grade 10. This chapter is light, reflection and refraction. Now we're going to be using a mind map to explore this chapter. Let's begin. Now this is the mind map that we're going to be looking at in this chapter. As you can see, it's extensive and it has a lot of data. Therefore, we'll be using snippets of these mind maps and we'll start explaining a bit about what each point means. Mind maps are a great way to organize your stuff. So whenever you want to study something, you can always refer to a mind map as a last minute revision. Now, in this mind map, we'll be looking at the reflection of light first. And we will look at the two laws of reflection. They are pretty important. Next, we will move on to mirrors. Over there, we'll explore three types of mirrors. Plane mirror, convex mirror, and concave mirror. Then we will move on to the refraction of light. And we look at the two laws that govern it. After that, we will move on towards lenses and the different types of lenses that are used. Convex lens and concave lens. Let's begin, shall we? Now, light, reflection, and refraction. Now, light is an electromagnetic energy. And when it bounces off something, it is called reflection. In the reflection of light, there are two laws that are very important. The first law says that the incident ray the normal to the surface at the point of incidence and the reflected ray all lies in the same plane. Now suppose we have a plane here and a perpendicular line called the normal and a light ray is incident on it and there is another ray which is reflected off the surface The rule states that this incident ray, the normal, and the reflected ray would all lie in one single plane. The second law states that the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. Therefore, the angle of incidence here and the angle of reflection here both are the same anywhere. Now, both these laws are present in any form of reflection of light, whether it's regular reflection or irregular reflection of light. Both these laws are always being followed. Now, that's all about reflection of light. Now, we will move on towards mirrors, especially concave and convex mirrors. Now, firstly, we'll learn about plane mirrors. Now, what is a plane mirror? A mirror with a plane surface which reflects light is known as a plane mirror. Now, in a plane mirror, the object has an image which is at the same size as the object and it is at the same distance from the surface of the mirror as the object. The object, is the object has a virtual image which is behind the mirror and the image is laterally inverted. These are the uh, properties of the image found in a plane mirror. Now, most of the mirrors that we come across are not plane. Some of them have spherical surfaces. These are called spherical mirrors. There are basically two types of spherical mirrors. The first type is 
concave mirror. A concave mirror has a spherical surface that curves inward. This is a concave mirror. It can produce virtual and real images. Let's look at the, how an image is formed in a concave mirror. Now, when an object is at infinity, the image would be at the focus. This point here is known as the focus. It is at the midpoint between the pole of a mirror, that is it's the center of the mirror, inside the mirror, and the center of curvature, which is the center of the sphere, the original sphere that the mirror was a part of. So the object, if at infinity, would have an image, a real image, at the focus. Now suppose the object is not at infinity, but it's beyond this point, C. So suppose it's here. Then the image would be between the focus and the center of curvature, somewhere around here. Now, suppose the object decides to move forward and is at the center of curvature, the image would now be at the center of curvature. The object and the image would be at the same point. Now, suppose the object decides to move further. So it's now between the center of curvature and the focus. The image would now be beyond the center of curvature. When the object reaches the focus of the mirror, the image would be at infinity. And if still the object decides to move forward and it's between the focus and the pole of the mirror, we get a virtual image behind the concave mirror. Now these are the six type of images that are formed in a concave mirror. Due to these properties, concave mirrors are used in torches and headlights to get powerful parallel beams of light forward. The same is being used in floodlights and reflector for projector lamps. Since concave mirrors can focus parallel rays of, rays of light at a single focus, they are used as solar devices. Now, a concave mirror had a surface which curved inwards. What about a spherical mirror whose surface bulges outwards? Like this. This is called a convex mirror. Now, a convex mirror produces only virtual images because its focus and its center of curvature are behind the mirror. And since the image forms there, the image is always virtual. Suppose an object is at infinity, the image is formed at the focus. And suppose an object is not at infinity, but it's in front of the pole, then the image would be formed between the pole and the focus. These are the two types of images in a convex mirror. Now, convex mirrors are used in, in the doors and glass and the mirrors that are found on vehicles. So the mirrors that you're finding on vehicles, such as cars and bikes, etc., are convex because they allow a wide field of view. Convex mirrors are also used in security cameras. Now, that completes the topic mirrors. So now we jump on towards our third topic, refraction of light. Now, in our earlier classes, we said that light travels in a straight line in one medium. And it's true, right? But what happens when the medium that light is traveling through changes. Suppose light travels from medium one to medium two. We can observe through experiments that light rays bend when they travel from one medium to another. 
this phenomena is called refraction of light. Now, as with reflection, refraction of light also has two very fundamental laws. The first law states that the incident ray, the normal and the refracted ray at the point of incidence all lies in the same plane for the two given transparent medium. So the incident ray, this one, and the reflected ray, and the normal which passes through that point, all lie in the same plane. The second law states that the ratio of the sine of angle of incidence to the sine of angle of refraction is always constant. Now this is the angle of incidence and this is the angle of refraction. When you divide the sine of both these angles, you get a constant value for two medium, which is known as refractive index. Now these are the laws for refraction of light. Now we will move on towards the second instrument, which uses refraction, lenses. Now, in lenses, we will be looking at convex or converging lens and concave or diverging lens. Now, convex lenses are the ones in which both the surfaces of the lens bulges outward, like this. Now, since there are two spherical surfaces, there will be two foci. We will represent them as F1 and F2 respectively. And their center of centers of curvature will now be represented by the multiplication of two with the focus. So it's basically 2F. Now, when an object is at infinity and a convex lens is placed, the image of that object will be at this point, F2. Now, suppose the object is beyond 2F1, but not at infinity, beyond this point. So the image would be between this point, F2, and this point, 2F2. So the image would be present at this area. Now, suppose the image, the object is at 2F1. The image would now be at 2F2. When the object is between 2F1 and F1, the image would start moving beyond 2F2. So when the, now when the object reaches F1, the image of this object would be at infinity. Now, till now, all of the images that were formed were real. But if the object is beyond F1, and it's between F1 and the optical center here, O, the image that forms would be virtual and on the same side of the convex lens. And because of this property, convex lenses are used in simple microscope, compound microscope, telescope, camera spec spec spectrometer, and spectacles. Now, now this is for convex lens when both the curved surfaces are bulging outwards. What happens when both the surfaces are bulging inwards, like this? Now we have reached into the realm of concave lenses. Now there are just two situations for concave lens. Again, there are focuses F1 and 2F1, F2 and 2F2. And now, in a concave lens, the image will always be virtual. So when the object is at infinity, the image would be at F1. And when the object is between infinity and the optical center O, 
the image would be between F1 and the optical center O. These are the two situations for concave lenses. Concave lenses or diverging lenses are used in eyeglasses and contact lenses. They are also used in flashlights and peepholes. Now that completes our mind map for this chapter. Now, in order to give you a better package, we've introduced flowcharts for the same chapter. Now, flowcharts are just another simple way of revising the chapter that you've just learned, light. Now, light here, this chapter light has two main parts, mirrors and lenses. Mirrors are further divided into two, converging or concave mirrors and diverging or convex mirrors. Concave mirrors are used in torches and headlights, floodlights, reflectors for projector lamps, solar devices and furnaces, shaving mirrors and dentist mirrors. Now, in a concave mirror, there are five, there are six um, images that, are, that can be formed. The images here are discussed. This is the object, the place where the object is, and these are the places where the image is. Diverging or convex have two cases which were discussed earlier. From mirrors, we'll move on to lenses. Again, there are two types of lenses. Concave lenses, which are diverging, and convex lenses, which are converging. Convex lenses are used in simple and compound microscopes, telescopes, camera spectrometers, and spectacles. Again, convex lenses have six types of images formed. These were discussed in the earlier section. And concave or diverging lenses have, again, two types of images formed. Now here there's a small section called human eye. Now using these lenses, we can correct our visual, vision problems. Myopia, which is short-sightedness, is corrected by concave lens. And hypermetropia, or farsightedness, can be corrected by a convex lens. Suppose a person has press myopia, or a condition where both myopia and hypermetropia is present, he uses a bifocal lens. Now, more on this part will be discussed in the next chapter, which is human eye and colorful world. And so that's all we have for this chapter, light, reflection, and refraction. We hope that this video was informative and it helped you understand the chapter and helped you to revise it as well. Now, for more such content, please visit our YouTube channel, Brain Blitz Audios. We have a host of content such as mind maps, learner words, stories, poems, etc. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Until next time, bye bye.